the library closed. The book you've been waiting for is finally in. After supper is finished and the dishes are washed, you curl up in your favorite reading chair. What's your pleasure? A mystery? A romance? The latest techno thriller? You begin to read. Plots develop and intertwine. Characters emerge, evolve, surprise. Conflicts materialize. Tensions mount. The climax approaches. And in the early hours of the morning, you turn the last page excitedly, expectantly, how will the story end? That's the question. The question that grabs our attention, whether it's a novel, a movie, or an episode of our favorite TV drama. It's the uncertainty about the ending that keeps us absorbed. What could be more frustrating than a story that doesn't end? What could be more disconcerting than a mystery in which the murderer is never identified? A romance in which love is never fulfilled? A gospel in which the risen Lord is never seen? Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So the women went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. He is not here. Is that any way to end this story? They said nothing. They were afraid. Is that any way to conclude a gospel? Mark has walked us through our Lord's ministry. We've heard the disciples called parables told, we've seen opposition arise, threats turn to violence, we've witnessed crucifixion, burial. Is that the end? Death seems so final. Is this the conclusion of Christ's story? Turn the page. There's one more chapter. On Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome went to the tomb. They discovered that the stone had been rolled aside and that the body was gone. A young man spoke to them strange words about Jesus being raised and going ahead to Galilee. And so these faithful, caring women fled from the tomb, amazed, afraid, and said nothing to anyone. The end. The end? It can't end there. Tell us more, Mark. Tell us how Mary recognized Jesus in the garden and he spoke her name. Tell us how he walked to Emmaus with two of his followers and broke bread with them. Tell us how Thomas finally believed. Finish the story, Mark. Wrap it up. Give us the conclusion. Don't just leave us with an empty tomb and terrified women.
we aren't the first to be bothered by the fact that Mark seems to end his story this way too soon. In fact, some early editions of his gospel have longer conclusions that include appearances of the risen Lord, additional teachings, the handiwork of some faithful Christians who felt that Mark had left important things unsaid. But all the evidence seems to point to the fact that the original concluded the way we heard. He is not here. He had been raised. He is going ahead of you to Galilee. That's no ending. Leaves too much in the air, too much unfinished business in the story to have it end that way. Was the Lord waiting for them in Galilee? How did they find him there? What did he say? What did they do? How did that encounter change them? Unfinished business. How is this story going to end? He is going ahead of you. I have a friend who always seems to arrive early. If we arrange to meet somewhere at noon, he'll be there 10 minutes till. He goes ahead of me and is waiting for me when I arrive. There is something about the faith that says that Christ is out there, not removed from us, but ahead of us, beckoning, calling, leading us on, waiting for us to arrive. The Easter story has no ending, no conclusion. Easter always calls us into the future, God's future. Where will we find the risen Christ? He is going on ahead. And where is he going? He is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. Where will Christ's story end? Where can we expect to find him? In Galilee. Why Galilee? That's home territory, the place where the disciples grew up, familiar turf, where they had lived, fished, collected taxes, played with their kids. Maybe Easter gets finished in ordinary places of life, where we eat, or sleep, or work, Maybe Christ's story comes to its conclusion in our everyday events when we write the checks and talk to our kids and listen to our friends at work. When we discover the holy in the midst of the routine of life, that's where the risen one comes to us. Galilee. Home, yes. But Galilee was also on the fringe. It was a long way to, from Galilee to Jerusalem in more ways than one. Galilee of the Gentiles, they called it. Because in Galilee, Jews and pagan Greeks lived side by side. And when the church first began to move out from Jerusalem, the first place it took root was Galilee. Galilee, the first mission field. The first place where the world began to hear the witness of those who knew that the Easter story was their own. Maybe Easter gets finished 
wherever the story is told, wherever the faith is lived, so that others see it and hear it and are claimed by it. Maybe Christ's story comes to its conclusion whenever and wherever those who know him and love him take up his cause and become his witnesses. Where the hungry are fed and the naked are clothed, life triumphs over death and the risen Christ is there. Where the fearful are comforted and the lonely befriended, life triumphs over death and the risen Christ is there. Where the shamed are forgiven and people burdened by guilt find grace, life triumphs over death and the risen Christ is there. Where people love and live in peace. It is Easter and the story goes on. The Easter story never ends. Never has, never will. It is unfinished business. God's continuing gift of life in the midst of the kingdom of death. We are just the latest to receive it, the latest to share it. He is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. Easter's not about endings. It's about possibility and promise, about expectations unfulfilled and a future beyond our control a future in the hand of God. He is going before you to Galilee. Mark couldn't tell us the end of the story. What he wanted to give us was a faith that would see us through to the end. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.